a decade and he's still all man and yard wide. Ladies and gentlemen, Harley Race. I'm going to show you how fake it is. These brave men are risking their careers as well as their personal safety to reveal what wrestling federations don't want you to know. Hello and welcome to OSW Review, the old school wrestling video podcast. <laughs> Build the glorious grapple vision and encoded with blast processing, we chronologically critique wrestling storylines, pay per view by pay per view. This is not that, sir, but what it is. Talking now to you, your boy, with a top hat and cane, Jay Hunter, and Mr. Cutton Twain in a box with Mike Knox. <laughs> it's V1, sir. What's the story? And with a cowl and a scowl, <laughs> it's OZ. We do. In a very special Brucey bonus episode, it's exposed pro wrestling's greatest secrets, and it's coming up right now. Oh, it was Welcome, Naggers. Happy days are here again. How was he? Hey there, big boy. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of the Lex Express episode? Top five all time. In oh my, my, my. So well, we've done seventy. This is episode. I'm not sure when. Okay. This is episode so 80? we've done. We've done like nearly eighty. Mm-hmm. My like top five. So this heat wave. Matthew episode one, Matthew, yeah, Matthew episode, episode two, two Matthew yeah. episode three, <laughs> we're done. No, so um, loved it. No wrestling in it, but I just thought there was a lot to pick the bones out of. Mm, a lot of meat on those bones. Yeah. 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 V one sir, how are you? I'm doing fucking great. Awesome. What is happening on Twitch, man? I am eagerly awaiting the release of the Division Two. Big, big fan of the first one, and I uh, can't wait to get sucked into this one. <laughs> Excellent. Can you pimp your URL for me, please? Come to twitch.tv forward slash OSW review and uh, hang out and uh, watch me play many great games. Rock on. Thanks to Simon Boehm. B O E H M. Boehm. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Simon Boehm for helping with research. Oh, went down a storm last time. Let's check in on New Japan. Oh, oh, oh Ooh, what oh. have we got? Yeah. Uh, Sweet Gorilla Mariyama has a bit of a sweet tooth. Upon looking at Sweet Gorilla Mariyama, you have to ask, what bar is Sweet Gorilla? (laughs) Yeah. There's literally no hiding that. He even put on the accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. An amazing moment. Tom really uh, set you up there. Uh, That's Mavs, Mavs Gillis from day eight of Fantastica Mania, January 21st. Oh, what do you think? What bar is now canon in New Japan? Yes! <laughs> canon <Can I> it? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking amazing. So, Steve, what in there is Sweet Gorilla? Yes! Sweet Gorilla, aka Togi Makabe, is wearing a glorious purple, yellow, and green onesie, which to me screams Samus's gravity suit. Just want to get that out there. My favorite video game of all time. Spend a lot of time looking at it. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, must pop upstairs and have a good hard think about that later. <laughs> so, Bakewell Infant says he is a violet crumble. Ooh, yeah, I like it. I want to taste that bar. I've no idea what it is. I, I love seeing these new bars from different countries that we can't get. Connor Clark says he is an eclair. Mm. Mm. Oh man, they're wonderful. Do they do the actual packets of them anymore? The like, you know, roly packets of them? I you haven't know seen them in a long time. Yeah. I don't know. I probably bring this up often, but I miss the secret bar very much. Do you remember that from the 80s? No, nobody would tell me about it. No! Oh! Oh, ho, ho. Well done, well done. Cal Nagiotti or Nagiot. 
Uh, I apologize for your name. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I apologize That's for me. I apologize for my <laughs> pronunciation oh, of your name. So me. Is what I meant to say. Getting too big for his boots. Yeah. I fucking butchered it. <laughs> Stamping on birds. Yeah. Slagging people's names. <laughs> Cal says he is an oompas. A packet yes, of Yes, a Wonka oompas. Yeah. Chris Hopkins has picked a dairy milk caramel bar. Lovely, gorgeous, delicious, yeah. like mm. delicious. Yeah, 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 yeah. Daniel Dunn has chosen packet of Monster Munch. Yes, which is my personal favorite. What a what a great uh, crisp. Harry Flynn. Uh, Harry Flynn. <laughs> <laughs> but by the way, kind of Pepsi Max to you, Harry, has chosen a Takis Fuego. Yeah. Yeah. Um, pretty, uh, pretty good, mate. Looks pretty delicious. good. And the Illuminati. Luminati. The Illuminati has chosen dark chocolate MMs. Bam! Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, dark chocolate peanut. Must be American. There, but there we go. There's the man himself, Mr. Togi Maccabee. Sweet nice gorilla. Sweet gorilla. Awesome job, Mavs. Jeez, great stuff. Thank you so much, mate. And that's what beer is. I love it. What beer? Expose Pro Wrestling's Greatest Secrets, a 1998 TV special on pro wrestling. Aired on NBC November 1st, 1998, and released the following September on VHS. Produced by Nash Entertainment, no relation, sadly, and Don Wiener as a sequel-ish to a similar documentary, Breaking the Magician's Code, Magic's Biggest Secrets Finally Revealed. So that's like David Copperfield, and he's like, I am an American. <laughs> I'm an American. <laughs> Claim to make the Statue of Liberty disappear. But it's still there. <laughs> <laughs> it's talking out of his arse. Oh, Wrestling Tie-In, the reboot of the Magician's Cafe Breakers in 2008, had Maria Canellis and Eve Torres, part of the first episode. Hmm. The Bentley has magically turned into a Lamborghini full of fun, complete with WWE divas Eve and Maria. Exposed, narrated by Nick Paquet, a.k.a. Salem the Cat. <gasps> it's Sabrina music. Well, the Sabrina. Melissa yeah. Joan Hart marking out somewhere. <laughs> but she's a big wrestling fan yeah, as well. She's right? watching Smackdown tapings right now. <laughs> um, I would say you were a Sabrina the Teenage Witch fan. Yes, I did for the first couple of seasons. Fell off a cliff after season four, I have to say. But her best mate, uh, she would... Won? Uh, the brunette the one with the dark hair yeah yeah her gimmick was she was dumpy but she was way oh, hotter than no. Melissa Joan Hart she was the kind of geeky yeah, one right yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I thought she was gorgeous there was one episode where she turns heel and she comes out in a cat suit and it's like pff, boom splicey yeah, yeah oh fucking hell I will uh, <laughs> <laughs> I used to love that show by the way Billy Gunn was in it oh yes he was <laughs> I'm glad you won. With my other son, I got beat up, and I've got gypsies as relatives. Exposed, this TV special would have aired at the start of season three of Sabrina, so this is like the height of Nick Bacay's fame here. <laughs> <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? It something. No, it doesn't. <laughs> oh, he also co-wrote Paul Blart, Mall Cop. Okay. Oh. There you go. There's one funny scene in that, mm. when uh, Paul Blart is drunk. Go on. He's just funny. What is it like? Falls over. Okay, I've never seen it. a fat man falls over. Yeah, yeah, but it's he, he is. I quite like Kevin James. I love King of Queens, but the rest of the movie's terrible. There was one scene in that movie that I liked. It's when he's doing the Max Payne like hero dive and he goes to shoot the guns, but because he's fat, he like just jumps about half a foot and just plops to the ground, and he has to like yeah. inches way off the camera. I thought that was awesome. Well, I thought that was okay. <laughs> <laughs> Filmed in the Grand Olympic Auditorium where the Golden Greek Jim Londos wrestled, who was a massive name in the 30s and 40s, equivalent to Bruno at MSG, Gotchen Hackenschmidt in the 20s, or OOC in the 18s. <laughs> it's movie famous too, as seen in Rocky, Man in the Moon, and yes, Ready to Rumble. Ooh. In front of a sellout, zero. 
crowd after a four-day shoot with a purported $2,000 payoff for each of the wrestlers, with a svelte runtime of 46 minutes. The gimmick of Exposed is that, much like magicians, the wrestlers are going to reveal how certain moves and stunts are pulled off without actually hurting each other, so completely smashing kayfabe. November 98, what is the kayfabe level at this time? It's the Attitude Era, so we're in the era of cool heels and anti-heroes, but it's all still within kayfabe explanation. Russo is still in the WWF, but he's under the watchful eye of Vince. Good stuff. They were just actually gearing up to Survivor Series 98 Deadly Game, which is the one-night tournament uh, for the WWF Championships, like the only tournament that drew in the WWF. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in WCW, however, just two months prior, Hulk Hogan is selling for Jay Leno. <sighs> the <give> <laughs> Fucking hell. And two months later, January 99, uh, is the finger poke of doom. Oh, Jesus Christ. Perhaps the biggest kayfabe shattering milestone in wrestling and is also seen as the start of the downturn in WCW. Be the best brother that you ever met. Take it up one rung higher than Brett. Stone pit bull best protect your neck. You can pick the steps, but you're getting wrecked. I won't hold my breath though. You may think that's too cold, Scorpio. Lost my smile, but I found my ego. When it goes wrong, we like damn it, d -Lo. They make it look so real, even though it isn't. What do you mean by fake? This TV special, kayfabe level, obliterated at zero, telling you straight up that wrestling is fake. So it's at the very bottom here of kayfabe, so Shane Douglas level. <laughs> <laughs> all shoot, all the time. <laughs> Oh, just for reference, low kayfabe would be modern WWE, where Seth Rollins gets on the mic and says, TV ratings are in the toilet. <sighs> because of you, Baron Corbin. Oh. Oh, so the amount of marks out there who were like, yeah, Seth, it's Baron's fault, and Vince is going to go back and fix it, despite being the man who booked it in the first place. <laughs> uh, medium kayfabe, that would be kind of CM Punk's work shoots, where he'll actually say something that's true, but it's all building towards a pay-per-view. Yeah. And uh, at the top there with uh, total kayfabe is where you'll find Mark Henry <laughs> yeah. and Aaron Anderson. Aaron Anderson. Yeah. Aaron. Oh, I miss those days. There will be some people that are angry at me for what I'm doing here. So who's going to betray wrestling and reveal the secrets? Betray wrestling? <laughs> Who are the exposers? <laughs> Those in the trench coats. Eight indie workers, because obviously to take this gig, you'd have to have people who aren't worried about job security. Because if anyone found out you did this, you're out the door. You know? It's hilarious. Plus that it? needs two grand. <laughs> <laughs> Brute force. Not Ed Leslie, but a dirty-chested frayed affair with a mini Thunderdome cage on his head. Pitbull Gary. He is. He's Pitbull Whoa. Gary. Wow. Yeah. Skullduggery. Dull buggery. <laughs> a masked ghoul. A Halloween thrift store affair. Pitbull Anto. Ah. The All-American Boy. What a great gimmick. It's uh, great. Yeah, the Patriot here. Mikey Henderson, a.k.a. Suicide Kid. Colossus. This is just like a sex fiend, I guess. <laughs> He's APW All Pro Wrestling's Max Justice. Ben Hurt. What a, you know, drink up Judah Ben Hurt. Oh my God, I actually have it here. <laughs> drink up Adam Pierce. <laughs> a Centurion gimmick in yellow. Private Pain, the army gimmick, that's Mike Modest doing double duty here on Exposed and he's also in Beyond the Mat. Modest is pretty solid. Jesus oh, Christ, I think maybe we need a little work there. Yeah. <laughs> Slither, which I think if Randy Orton went to dub, we'd call him Slither. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is Chris Daniels. You can spot him a mile off. His head you? is just, yeah. you know, you can't fake his head. <laughs> And then Brash Knuckles, less Mad Max and more Waterworld. <laughs> IPW's Doc Savage, who was part of the production team, so he knew everything going on. What's with the porn gimmicks, lads? Like, these are very strong stripper gimmicks. Because we're in the Attitude Era, everyone just wears black. And yeah. these guys are going around. Wrestlelicious over here, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. 
NBC thought this would be such a rousing success that they actually trademarked all the gimmicks and costumes and they thought, oh, we're going to start touring. Oh my God. <laughs> Fucking marks. <laughs> it's not real. It's totally predetermined. I'll tell the truth. Look, it's fake. Exposed will go through various aspects of wrestling, tell you how it's built to deceive you. Basic moves, the art of selling, match layout, the ring, the ref, plants, props, blood, all building to the big finish, finishing moves. If you're wondering, how could you get the wrestlers to say the words, wrestling is fake? And it's like, the producers asked the wrestlers to repeat the question before they answered. So the question would be, what do you tell fans when they tell you wrestling is fake? And they just cut the end of it. Oh, wrestling is fake. That's fucking sneaky. Surely that's a breach of contract of some sort. That's... Tough shit. You said it? Yeah. It's like, uh, that's the rock bottom editing. It's like, stop that, Mr. Simpson. (laughs) 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 The the fucking clock bouncing around in the background. Um, It's really fucking cunty because they have them by their balls because they can't do anything because then they'll have to go public. Will they? If you're going to take them to court, you can't be like, Slither is his <laughs> Versus <laughs> the state of California. Salem the cat. What pay-per-view is this? <laughs> oh, I find that. Wrestler court. <laughs> 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 it's a little jury. Every wrestling match is filled with explosive action. Violence looks real because the men in the ring employ secret tricks to make it look a lot more dangerous than it really is. The deception starts with five basic moves that every wrestler needs to know. Kick off! First up is the basics. Exposed five moves of doom. We're welcomed by Salem and frames this as if he's revealing a magic show's secrets. But it's not just telling people that wrestling is fake. It almost feels like it's taking the piss out of fans. Like, you didn't believe this was true, did you? Oh, yeah, you're a you stupid fucking idiot. fucking idiot, idiot, Mark, cunt, bollock, you know, like... <laughs> but, but like <laughs> you should have narrated this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's it's the patronising tone and the, the fans don't know. Because they don't know the secrets. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You it's know, awful. They, they do know. They might not know exactly, but they know. Yeah. Oh, these punches are fake. Well, yeah, the wrestlers don't have permanent black eyes, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> and broken wrists and hands. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In this angle, we can see that the punches are so light, they barely touch the wrestler's stomach. The fans think they're real because they don't know the secrets. The stomp. Clap. Stomp, 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 stomp clap. clap. <laughs> uh, making the punch sound with their feet. I was like, yeah, absolutely. Actually, when I was eight, when I was in primary school, I was in a fight. And when I punched, I also stomped the ground. Yeah. <laughs> People are probably, what is he doing? Yeah, yeah, it punches. wasn't that effective, you know. Yeah. Uh, but we yeah. broke up. So it was a, it was a double DQ. Brawl to the back. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, did you pull your punches? Oh, open fist. That would be <laughs> Be like the rock and he's down and I want to stomp him and I kind of waggle my foot. The turnbuckle kick. Uh, Run into my boot with your hand, which protects your face. Brute force. Holy shit. The selling on it. He runs in. It's like a one man aloha iron here. (laughs) (laughs) And number five, the headbutt. Hold the head with your hand and headbutt your thumb. Yeah. Yeah. So what makes these moves look so believable when you watch a match? Wrestlers call it the cell. Next up, the cell. Oh, see, how do you sell? Well, Jay, you sit on the mat, legs out in front of you. Say there's a rear naked choke or whatever going on behind you. One foot up, that foot down. Second foot up, that foot down. Or alternatively, just one foot up and that foot down. And waggle. <laughs> oh, you can, the waggle is a, is a third yeah, option. Waggle. Uh, oh, yeah, waggle. You and Marty, I believe, have perfected the art. Where, where do you think I got it from? <laughs> <laughs> ben Hurt here sells a swinging neck breaker by twiddling his feet. <laughs> Mark, <laughs> Dave. Oh, see. Oh, see. <laughs> Did you like the bit where they filmed the scene where your man 
brash knuckles put someone in an arm bar and he didn't sell <laughs> <laughs> and he's just lying. <laughs> oh, oh, see. <laughs> oh, 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 see. <laughs> <laughs> and like, then, of course, Salem goes, That's showbiz. That's showbiz. Oh, man. Just in general, the selling with these wrestlers, it's atrocious. Full on panto selling, like dull buggery here. He runs All American Boys face on the top rope and he's like, I was like, Fuck right off, mate. Why are you protecting your face if you have a mask on? <laughs> this is one of the few instances where you can actually... Do- double cover, your- Sa- yeah. safety first. Maybe just like getting into a good fucking habit, so therefore if you're ever wrestling without a mask, you won't forget to do it. Ah. Mm. Masks and injury. It always makes me think of Attitude Era Kane with his original mask. Whenever he'd wrestle X-Pac, he's like, oh, he's got a mask on, he's protected. So he just wallop him in the face ah. with a roundhouse. And how do wrestlers fly out of the ring, bash into their opponents, and not get hurt? Find out how it's done when we expose more of wrestling's greatest secrets. But first, here's one of pro wrestling's fabulous fakes, the suplex. Oh, wow. Have we mentioned the ads? Oh, my God. They have this infuriating structure where they'll throw to an ad, but then say, oh, hang on, let's explain another move, a fabulous fake, and then go to ad break. So even though there's only four ads in the show, you're throwing to it eight times. Mm. Like most of the time is spent going to ad break. (laughs) (laughs) So what are these fabulous fakes? Skullduggery, suplexes, slither. How did they do it? How you'd expect. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, although they do show you there's a flat back bump and outstretched arms, that yeah. is correct. And finish with a flying crossbody. Yeah, exactly how it looks. You jump and he catches you and you both fall down and it looks shit. That was probably the like one that bugged me the most. They were like, and the secret to this one is he catches him. <laughs> <sighs> no shit, Sherlock. I'm wondering, who was the audience for this? People who laughed at wrestling. So people who hate wrestling. Yeah. yeah. Now, I watched it on Sky One when it came out. <laughs> Pretty sure I... Uh, yeah, me too. You yeah. know, and I did... At the t- I learned a couple of things. Yeah. He kicks the arm before he goes for the splash, and then the wrestler knows to put his arm in. That's something that I honestly didn't know. <laughs> it's like, you know, like, I'd be lying there, and if someone kicked my arm, I'd be like, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Masked referee Dan Farron, he actually said, uh, that's why I didn't mind doing this, cafe breaking stuff, because you already know all this stuff, so... Pretty much. Okay, here we go. The Booker. The man who orchestrates this big scam is called the Booker. As a Booker, your main job is putting two people together that'll draw money. Yeah. Booker man. The puppet master who decides who wins and who loses. The Kevin hero Sullivan. and the villain. No. No. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> a, a different sorry, Batman sorry, sitting sorry, in darkness. Sorry. Shades and a white t-shirt. He looks like Russo's creative control as well. That's their gimmick. <laughs> it's actually Harley Race. I never... I thought Harley Race was a lot thinner than that. No, no, Harley Race. Um, he actually worked the producers, spinning them bullshit tricks, like sawing a trophy in half beforehand. So you don't do that. And handing out signs. Like, you didn't really think they brought those signs from home, did you? That is probably the most insulting line in this entire show. I I was like... I brought a sign to a house show. Yes! <laughs> I was like, I've been to many wrestling shows. <laughs> Fans bring signs. Uh, however, I do think TNA would hand out signs to the crowd. Because it was this weird, very TV-friendly font. It was like thick, bolded, and it was clear. Mm. You know, so I, I think they do do it. Yeah, so. like, you know, companies have done it. Like, WWE have done it, but... This guy tried to tell you, like, you didn't think fans made signs, did you? I was like, uh, uh, yeah, actually. <laughs> yeah, I fucking did. Including me. Uh, on my first house show that I went to, I brought about a dozen signs. One for every wrestler that I wanted to see. Can you remember any of them? I had one for Jericho, one for Matt Hardy, what, and did, one for Brock Lesnar. Did they say the name or what? Jericho's one, we got a stencil, you know, doing his pose. Oh, nice. Yeah. And we'd spray painted blue and we'd write Jericho in yellow. We painted the Evolution car sign 
Yeah. Painted the gold with a red background. Matt Hardy painted the entire thing black and did the V1. There's serious work put in here. Yeah, yeah. Like, I was excited to go to this show. This is like, holy fuck. I was like 18. <laughs> 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 my first house show, I brought a big sign that said, My Boy Coach. Yeah. Obviously, they're not bringing the commentators down. That didn't deter me. <laughs> you ever brought a sign to a house show scene? No, but I found a scarf after my first house show. And later on, it became Jericho Scarf. <laughs> that scarf grew up to me. <laughs> you didn't think they really brought all those signs from home, did you? We get a complete white hat, black hat explanation of Babyface and Heel. Babyface is the superhero good guy who doesn't cheat. Heel is the villain, the exact opposite. I love how they shorten Babyface to the baby. Yeah. Like, uh, so where Gotta is get the lingo? Yeah. Where is the baby? Here yeah. comes the baby. <laughs> <laughs> but even there are kind of long explanations of the baby face and the heel. Just say the good guy and the bad guy. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Talking about the baby though, it's like <laughs> where is Big Show? <laughs> <laughs> You can bet if you see someone with a trophy or a chair, you just know there's going to be some trouble. Did you enjoy the voice modulation to hide his identity, Harley Racer? The snitching on the mafia kind of gimmick? Yeah, I did. You know, I uh, actually liked that. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Oh, during the show's taping, a crew member told an Entertainment Weekly photographer he couldn't snap photos of the unmasked grapplers for everyone's safety, including his own. <laughs> <laughs> There's no kayfabe. Like, I mean, like, this is keeping kayfabe. You know? <laughs> it's gone full circle. It absolutely has. Next up, calling the match. Salem tells us the wrestlers know who will win or lose, but how that happens is up to them, which is absolutely not the case. Like, unless you're on the indiest of the indies where they just say, go out and do whatever. Or if you're at the top tier, like Jericho and Michaels, tell Vince, here's what I've got planned for 12 weeks. I think in, in the Attitude Era, it's definitely looser. Um, where they give you bullet points and that, but modern day, it's like they're completely scripted. Completely yeah. scripted. Everything is. And so what would happen is wrestlers work out the match backstage with road agents, all the big spots and how long they have, and they get live notes from the office in the back watching, and they'd relay the information via the referee, mm. which they do mention. Do you like how they hid Harley's voice, but like these guys bellowing spots? No, modulation. Just, yeah. <laughs> But that's one thing I definitely learned 20 years ago was the wrestlers talking to each other in the ring. I didn't know that. Holy shit. It was like, oh my. Because Cena wasn't around yet. <laughs> <laughs> Brute force. He just bellows out spots. And like, <laughs> I got him now, baby. Two elbows. <laughs> you're mine. You're mine, tackle. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. You talk too much. I got him now, baby. Oh, two elbows. I got him, baby. You're mine. You're mine, tackle. You don't think these lugs can remember all those moves, do you? (laughs) Fucking hell. That made me so fucking angry. (laughs) Yes, they can. (laughs) They do, and have done for decades, mate. What a cunt. There's another deception that fans can't see, even though they're staring at it during the entire match. It's not the wrestlers. It's the ring. Ooh, let us break down the ring. The turnbuckle looks like the wrestlers are bashing their heads into solid steel turnbuckles. Come What's on. It, Listen, very prominent, George the Animal Steel. His gimmick was tearing the turnbuckle apart and feasting on the foam. And, and hence why when the wrestler wants to do some serious damage, they take it off mm. to yeah. expose the steel ring. Yeah. There we go. Four inches of foam rubber padding. Softer than an orthopedic pillow. What about the mat? A wrestling ring has a soft mat, layers of thick padding and a giant spring, which is used in older rings, not currently. Dude, well, well, it's not that soft, but it is much softer now than it would have been in the 80s, where it was rock hard. Yeah, it was like, yeah, it's one of those old boxing rings nearly. Yeah, and that's why everyone has back injuries from that time. If you're wondering what modern rings look like now, modern rings consist of a lattice of steel beams, then planks of plywood, thin mats, and then a canvas stretched over the top. Apron-wise, in the 90s, up until the mid-2010s, they had uh, like real aprons, and now they're LED boards, 
Which I I miss the physical aprons. You yeah, know? so do I. It's like the difference between holding a picture in your hand and just a picture on your phone or something. It's not quite as nice. But lurking below is a bigger, more deceptive secret. A microphone sends those crashes and bangs through the arena's speaker system, amplifying them a hundred times over. Oh, a microphone under the ring. I like how they compare the natural arena sound of the mat versus like the booming bass of when you have a microphone and that amplifier yep. under the ring. It's like the difference between a shotgun in real life. It's kind of weedy sounding versus movie shotgun like Arnie's one, which is more of a cannon sound, Ooh. which is a cannon and a couple of guns mixed together. Ooh, better call a chiropractor. Now let's turn the hidden microphone off. Not nearly as impressive, is it? Actually, got a shout out, Hell in a Cell 97, Bad Blood, Shawn Michaels versus Taker. Uh, right before the match, they were worried that Shawn would have an ally under the ring, so Slaughter looks under the ring, and Jerry Lawler's like, oh, I wonder what's all under that ring. The cameraman actually has a look underneath, and fucking Slaughter is still waving his flashlight around, so you see an amplifier, and I was like, oh, fuck! Oh. <laughs> Exposed! <laughs> What about the referee? They liaise information from the bookers to the wrestlers. Next spot, when to go home, down to basic info. Like, actually, Mania 8, Lego Ref. When he's talking to Sean, he's actually, oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. and he's like, actually, clear your nose, mate. And Sean's like, oh, clear my nose. There really? Go. There you go. Hmm. I thought this bit was really difficult to watch. Like, they really take fans as rubes, explaining that the ref's in on the action, like being distracted at crucial moments like denying a hot tag to stir up the crowd i mean in kayfabe referees are some of the stupidest people in the universe Mm -hmm. you know so to believe that they're not part of the act is (laughs) naive (laughs) to say the least they do actually mention one thing the more you notice a ref the worse he's doing his job i was like yeah i agree completely Makes me think of Earl Hebner getting himself over when a heel is holding on to the ropes and the heel doesn't break his grasp. He'll like jump over and Way! kick it off. You love that spot. Fuck you. Count <laughs> <laughs> him out. That's one, two, three, four, five, DQ. That's it. Yeah. You don't involve yourself in it. Stop getting yourself. Stop hot dogging. Yeah, absolutely. I tell you, you can see that Earl Hebner doesn't like us doing everything you have. Well, Earl's got a heart. He knows what's right and what's not. Oh, look at that. Three ways to garner cheap heat. Number one, get the mic and rile the crowd up. Hilarious. WWE still do it today. So what about the local sports team? And everyone goes, boo, it gets it so over. Look, look. Oklahoma City, now I get that. It never doesn't garner huge heat. Unless you go to Manchester (gasps) and you talk about Man United and they're all City fans. (laughs) Amazing. How's the Manchester sports team today? (laughs) 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 Two, fight on the outside. I was like, yeah, that's great. Yeah. And number three, heel valets interfering. I thought something sorely missing in WWE today. Yeah. Like, it's basically just Zelina Vega. That's about it. Yeah, pretty much. Leo Rush. Yeah. The other time, and I can't really think of anyone else. Lana? Maybe Lana, yeah. but she hasn't been mm. featured recently. Mm-hmm. She's pretty much gone from like w- Smackers. Yeah, WWE, like, really trim back on valets. Maybe they don't want to pay for two flights, oh. right, that kind of thing. They're just. You don't have to do it at a house show, but do it on TV. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, a package deal is always better than the single. Package <laughs> deal. <laughs> <laughs> like, Brock Lesnar is made even better with Paul Heyman. Significantly. Mm. And once I notice she's done doing her job, I'll tell him to turn around. This guy, this wrestler with the valet, he was not comfortable breaking kayfabe. He was still, when he was ah. behind the scenes talking about, it, I'm going to make the ref distracted by my <laughs> woman. Then I'm going to hit him. <laughs> then I'm going to tell the ref I hit him. <laughs> there is, he was borderline Aaron Anderson. <laughs> Even his shoots are works. <laughs> We're exactly like Hollywood or the movies because everything you see is a total illusion. Oh, 
Holy shit. Shills and plants. Man, <sighs> it's my type of cave, babe. <laughs> Number one, tearing up a kid's autograph book on the way to the ring. Have you ever seen an autograph book at a wrestling event? On TV or in person? No. no I th- okay. I think that spot died out with smallpox. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Um, like... It is true that extras that WWE use are usually related to the business. Like CM Punk and Mr. Kennedy had their debuts asking Brock Lesnar for his autograph. That's the one where he signed some girl's tit. Or if you need a security guard, how about Sheamus or Barrett, Cesaro, EC3, MVP, Armando Estrada, Darren Young, Johnny Gargano, Drew Gulak and Bobby Roode. Oh my goodness. (laughs) Bobby Roode. Bobby Roode. Clean face on him. Big a clean, clean bum. bum. <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck. And of course then, uh, former WWE tag champion at WrestleMania, Nicholas, was one of the referee sons, right? Yes, very good. Yeah. Well done, well done. Also, just with kids, Bray Wyatt, he had his choir and they were taunting Cena and there was a cage. And the main choir boy <laughs> was Jameson's kid. McGuire's. Jameson must have been old enough when he was conceived, no? When he sired him. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. He Soiled ha- him. <laughs> Man, that means Jameson, you know, had sex <laughs> at least once. <laughs> oh my God. And the main event here of Shields and Plants, the granny bump. <sighs> Where's that gone? <laughs> I've never seen one. <laughs> the most famous granny. Oh, wait, okay. Uh, Pushing a sweet old lady is, uh, how's that for pile driving, Miss Daisy? <laughs> That's disgusting, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not making a sound for this. Yeah, yeah, no yeah. Fucking no, way. no, no. <laughs> It'd be more sort as well, wouldn't it? Uh-huh. <laughs> how's that for pile driving, Miss Daisy? Granny Bump, move over Watchman Janitor. Holy shit, this was a tour de force <laughs> selling. Shit. I like it. Um, I just, I loved it when she fell over and the two lads around her were like, oh, are you okay, Granny? And then they just went back. They didn't pick her up. They just, ooh, boo. <laughs> you know, holding the nose and, and all that. At the, at the what wrestling. year is this? Yeah. With the fans and the popcorn. and yeah. the yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ. Um, of course, the most famous granny plant in wrestling, back with WCW and Hollywood Hogan, December of 97 Nitro, where Hogan goes out to the crowd and she's like, <laughs> <laughs> and Hogan's at her for like 40 seconds oh. and she just is doing the swipe and the, oh, I'll get you. It was, holy she, shit. She's running out of things to do. She's like, please go away. Please. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Three sections left. We have props. One a trophy. The one they use here. What a bockety piece oh of shit. Oh my god. <laughs> it explodes on impact. <laughs> <laughs> In real wrestling, generally a better build. Like Brett had a really tough time pulling apart Bad News Brown's trophy at WrestleMania 4. Or he had to stamp. <clears throat> fucking hell. Even with Edge's King of the Rings Stanley Cup, Christian got it and like dropped it on Edge and it didn't make a dent. Hmm. <laughs> Although I do believe that uh, I think Braun got a trophy for winning the greatest Royal Rumble. The greatest! <laughs> <laughs> and that was a piece of junk. State of it. Like, it looked gorgeous, but someone bumped into it on accident and it just... Pfft, <laughs> <laughs> it just exploded. <laughs> Yeah, it's like uh, Razor uh, Scott Hall when he had the cinder block on Austin's <laughs> knee. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Speaking of... Wispy clouds, salt in the eyes, a staple of Mr. Fuji's repertoire. Well, firstly, it doesn't look like salt. No. It looks like tall compared. Yeah, yeah. Right? And that's what it or is. Caster sugar. Mm. Yeah. Secondly, so what if it was salt? The rest of your nose is coming, close your eyes. Salt doesn't stick, really. If it's dry, it'll just drop off. Um, this spot is one of the most cafe breaking spots ever. It's because, you know, someone gets salt in the eyes, but... How does the referee not turn around and look at all this like white cloud that's now <laughs> in the ring? I was like, no, I have to count to three. It's because they're the stupidest people in the universe. Do you know who did the salt spot great? John Claude Van Damme in Bloodsport. He sold it like a fucking boss. Number three, chairs. 
They're real, but they're pretty shitty folding chairs. Fold them up and hit the meaty part of the back. Unless you're the Attitude Era rock where you swing for the fences right into the face. <laughs> Hi, Ken Shamrock. <laughs> The alternative to uh, hitting somebody on the back with a chair is you could hit Taker in the face with a chair, but you're going to get to within a metre <laughs> before you hit his hand. Yeah. <laughs> he should have one of those giant foam hands. <laughs> <laughs> I never understood why, when you're using these chairs, would you not use that like kind of more crumply material? Like, you know, the... Alu foil. Yeah, yeah. Like, what they use for the cookie sheets. Just use that instead yeah. so you can whack people in the head with it. Yeah. yeah. All you want is the sound and it for it to be crumpled afterwards. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, what about tables? Also real, but they're made of flimsy particle board. I was actually thinking it depends on the company and how much yeah. of a budget they have. Yeah. Because <laughs> if it's a TNA table, then you just look at it and it breaks <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> and Steiner and he put the Yvonne on oh it. Oh, my it God. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, then there's Japanese tables, which are ones that families eat dinners on. <laughs> and they're about one foot high. <laughs> Since the table is softer than the concrete floor, it breaks the wrestler's fall. But it sure looks dangerous to the fans, because they don't know the secrets. Before our main event, there's one thing left to cover. Juicing. Steroids. <laughs> <laughs> the other juice. <laughs> blood. Causing yourself to bleed. I was like, oh, please don't say blood pack, please. Because I was like, I, no one would grab like a baggie of Heinz and, oh, you know, because it, it, it would look bollocks. Thankfully, they show the ref handing off part of a razor blade and cutting yourself. So why all the blood? Well, most people think it's fake. Well, here's a secret you wouldn't expect. That's a real cut, and the blood's real too. Of course, you get the famous example from WrestleMania X7, Rock and Austin. They're outside the ring, and Earl has the razor to pass off to the Rock, but he actually backs up and falls over the stairs, and he drops it, and the Rock has to bend down <laughs> and pick it up oh and palm it. God. He does it very skillfully, though. You'd have to awesome. be looking for He's it. He's the yeah. fucking Rock. Yeah. Oh, so we covered the basic moves. The booker, calling a match. The ring, the ref, cheap heat, props, blood. There's only one section left. Because it's time for your main event. This is better than pay-per-view. It's your main event. <laughs> the big finish. Literally five wrestlers explain their finishers. Of course, the most devastating finisher, uh, the backbreaker. <laughs> <laughs> in, back in 19 diggity dick. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck's sake. Who is using a finishing move? as a, The backbreaker as a finishing move. Anyone? Like the closest I can think of is Katie Lee Burchill, where she'd actually grab the hair and pull it back and then knee to the back. And like uh, Roderick Strong's gimmick because that he had loads. Fuck of- off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not even going to finish that sentence. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that was perfect. No, okay. Shout out to Bret Hart for the greatest backbreaker yes. in wrestling history. Uh, they explain the wrestlers balance their weight. The opponent does all the heavy lifting, uh, while you you'll land on your upper back, but your feet take the impact. Another spectacular finisher is the Hurricanrana. Number two, a top rope Hurricanrana. Hurricanrana. Pretty self-explanatory. You know, the one who takes it, you do a forward flip. I always hated these kind of moves, like the superplex in particular. The wrestlers have to do it safely so that you can really see them helping each other out. It takes ages. It never doesn't look fake. Yeah. It's just, it takes too long, you know? It breaks the illusion that it's a fight. Just a, yeah. with the Hurricane Rana, so Slither says that it's a risky move and Salem says, well, it is, unless you know the secret. But it, it's a risky move anyway, regardless of whether you know the fucking secret or not. Salem, or the writers of the show, think it's risky for the wrestler taking it. It's not. It's risky for the wrestler delivering the move. Mm. Uh, the wrestler taking it just as a forward bump. Mm. So, again, not getting it. No. No, uh, absolutely not. Shit, a baseball slide is a risky move. Mm. Like, a couple of different people broke their legs. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Number three, Hogan leg drop. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, it's performed so shittily here. 
Brute Force bends the knee, creating an arc to not land on Private Payne's neck, and takes the bump on his arse. I was like, that'll fuck you up later. And <laughs> like a fucking Hogan? Yeah, 2004, yeah. double hip replacement. Yeah. Running Bulldog, which looks as shit as you'd expect when you drive your opponent's head into the mat, but your arm is wrapped around it, cushioning it. Yeah. So it's never not going to look shit. Mm. Regardless of even that, it's a shit move anyway. Oh, just Bulldog looks crap. Has anyone used that as a finisher in the last couple of decades? Only in... Smackdown vs. Raw video game. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I have to say Jericho had a much better idea, which is just grab the back of the opponent's head and then run and jump. Much so better. you can actually slam it down. Still yeah. looks shit though. It's yeah. like an X Factor. Yeah, yeah. And finally, the pile driver. The most dangerous move here, actually. Without question. Yeah, yeah. so here we go. It's a real one. Uh, tuck your head between your opponent's thighs so that's not peeking below the knee and you don't break their neck. So you sit down on your arse and eject the opponent upwards takes two skilled wrestlers to pull this off. And that's why it's number three on WWE's top 11 banned moves list. Hmm? What are two that are above it? Hey! Steve! <laughs> you walked into my <laughs> trap. <laughs> top 11 banned moves in WWE. Number 11, the original double hooked pedigree. And Big Bobby B, he actually gave me one of these onto a pitch. It was fucking terrible. It's just face on the ground. Yeah. Not releasing the yeah, arms. Yeah, yeah. It's cunty. Yeah. End up your man will, when you pull him back, the top of his head will hit the mat and awful stuff. Kane takes full advantage of them outlawing this, <laughs> getting the knee up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm actually waiting for someone to next level take the pedigree bump, but if they can somehow turn around and take a flat back bump <laughs> from a pedigree. <laughs> Joe it. <laughs> and then pick up their bags on the way out. Yeah. <laughs> Number 10. A burning hammer. Kendo Kobashi's move. Kiboshed in the WWE. Tyler Rex used to do it, but Cena moaned about it saying, oh, it's too similar to an AA. To be fair, it is. It's like an AA, but the opponent is facing the other way. So instead of looking down the mat, they're looking up on the seating. Hilariously, Brian Kendrick didn't get the memo and he used it during the Cruiserweight Classic Finals. <laughs> but Good. it wasn't the finish. Oh, Argentine backbreaker rack. Number nine. A shooting star press. Shelved when Brock broke it out for the finish of the WrestleMania 19 main event. Landed on his head, joined Kurt Angle in the hospital. And then Billy Kidman, he botched oh, it. 2004. B- BK Botcher. BK <laughs> Botcher. <laughs> uh, so it was just shelved after that. He, he fucking caved Chavo's head in. His 450 was the ugliest one I've ever seen. He couldn't jump and do a flip he had to jump to the side state of it that's mate. how it was you know in the late 90s yeah ugly 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 give it a couple of years and it was revived with the cruiser weights like Evan Bourne in the late 2000s stunning and Neville slash Bastard Pack after that that was his finisher yeah Bastard Pack number 8 the Brain Buster because almost all wrestlers on the planet aren't Aaron Anderson so yeah a very dangerous move you're Doing a suplex, but landing them on their neck. So Honestly, like, let's just leave it out. Arn and Eddie, the two yeah. best ones ever. Eddie's not a huge guy either. No. You know? Jacked to the yeah, guns, and, though. Yeah. Number seven. Diving headbutt. Besides the obvious Benoit reference, Daniel Bryan's uh, concussion problems. Let's just leave it there. Right? Please. Can, yeah. can, I know, but it looks shit as well. Yeah. Diving headbutt looks shit. I don't know what you're getting at. Unless you're landing with your head on their head. It's mostly you land on their shoulder. Yeah. Why would that... So it hurts them? you more. It would hurt yes. you more, yeah. I don't... I've never understood it. Yeah. And say you land on their arm. That's cushioning the blow. I don't know why you get a concussion out of that. Well, because there's a massive force in going from moving to not moving, you know, and your brain takes that. Yeah, yeah. Man, I'll use my brain to injure you. Yeah. Holy <laughs> shit. Number six. <sighs> the muscle buster. Why? Samojo, after Tyson Kidd took it and needed neck surgery. How? Um, yeah, it sucks because like the move is built to be safe. You yeah, tuck the neck in. It looks like the safest move yeah. in the world. Surely, and you bump on your back. Surely that's just a case of too many bumps over the years, and your yeah. neck was fucked. It just so happened that that was the move that did the damage. Yeah, it could have been anything. Yeah. Like yeah, like I'd gladly take that move hmm. as a wrestler. From which one of us? 
Neo. <laughs> <laughs> Beast of an athlete. It, it'd be great because it just wouldn't turn up. Like. <laughs> Number five. Randy Orton's punt. Uh, also very sad to say goodbye to this one. Looks vicious. Orton clouts like with the outside of his boot kind of changes direction and velocity. So it's not bad at all, but it looks horrific. Mm. He's a pro as well, you know. Didn't he clatter Vince once? Yeah, with it? it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Seen uh, as that as well, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the move is trying to give people concussions and WWE don't. Yeah, it doesn't. Number four. Uh huh. The pile driver pretty much outlawed when Triple H felt fucked up after Taker tombstoned them. This is back at WrestleMania 2001. And then Shane at Survivor Series 2001. So now it's a rare occurrence. Oh, well, holy God, the fans flipped out when Cena and Punk did it yeah. on Raw 2013. No! Taker did break out the tombstone on Lesnar in a match versus Brock versus Rollins, so now it's just a special move that you can do sometimes. And Kane will break it out every now and again as well. I think Kane. Oh, yeah? I think Kane did it on Finn Balor once. Oh, oh when up, up Finny was stage. getting buried really hard, yeah, really yeah, badly. Yeah. And Cena still breaks it out every so often because he's beyond reproach at this point. Yeah, it's awesome when you get too big and you just fuck you. Yeah. You know? Uh, props to Jerry Lawler, who's always had a fantastic pile driver. Even he's shelved it since around 2000, but he'll still bring it out every so often, like, it's tiles! In, but what else is he going to do? <laughs> <laughs> His finisher is the jumping punch now. Yeah, yeah. But it's off Brett's rope, so, you know. Foley also had a nice pile oh, driver. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Pulling the, pile driver. The, old, yeah. the wedgie pile yes. driver, yeah. <laughs> He'd always pull your jocks yeah. into your crack, yeah. yeah. Number three. Seth Rollins' moveset. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. Rollins, his buckle bomb, he dislocated Finn Balor's shoulder, ending his title run during the match where he won it. Hurt Sting as well shortly afterwards, uh, so not sad to see it go. Also, the curb stomp. Uh, I don't get why this is banned. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think because... Rollins turned babyface. WWE thought their PG audience would imitate it and the sponsors didn't like it and the concussion lawsuit and it's, like, it's not a good look. But like, it's incredibly safe. You know, Seth places his boot on the opponent's kind of shoulder blades and the opponent does all the work. Yeah. Do you remember the one he did with, uh, in his match with Orton at Mania where he jumped on Orton's back and Orton like hooshed him up into the air and he came down with the blackout? Incredible. Number two. The Styles Clash. Yeah, AJ Styles breaking multiple wrestlers' necks before it got the WWE, both Indie Circuit and in New Japan. Do you remember who it was? Uh, Yoshitatsu. Yeah. Fuck. Okay, like, if wrestlers can't be relied upon to arch their neck back instead, you know, because they're conditioned to tuck their chin in, better be safe and sorry, we can leave it. That's yeah. It's a shame because he has such an amazing transition. Instinct is a it. tough thing to yeah. unlearn. Yeah. And look... It's a move, it gets a pop, but he's still one of the best wrestlers in the world without doing it, so it's fine, and, you know? And, and Break like, it out of Mania. Yeah, and like, look, I have no issue, like, you know, people might complain, fuck's sake, can they not just arch their head back? I would liken it to, you know, have you ever tried to ride one of those bikes that you put the handlebars to the right and the bike goes left and vice versa? It's incredible. You just difficult. can't, can't yeah, do it. Yeah. Your brain just yeah. says no. Yeah. And brain says no. <laughs> and Number one. The Vertebreaker. Hurricane's awesome maneuver, but obviously for safety reasons, like, just can't do it. It's actually, Homicide does it, the gringo killer. Yeah, uh, he used to call it the cop killer. Which is awesome. Well, obviously. Uh-uh. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> be more racist. Yeah. <laughs> but Helms actually broke it out a few times in the WWE, and, uh, ooh, Seth Rollins does it on house shows. He did it to AJ Styles there, and I was like, oh, man. Holy fucking shit. Please get off this list, mate. If your timing is off by milliseconds you're fucked looks incredible though he's got him in the position for the Verna Breaker if he can hit his head double fight him no all right, so that was your top 11 list. Shout out to the Poisoned Frankensteiner. Actually, Bailey hit a top rope Poisoned Frankensteiner on Sasha, NXT TakeOver Brooklyn back in 2015. Injured Banks, that's it. Actually, they've since rescinded it. Part of Mustafa Ali's arsenal. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Ray Ray, I think, broke one out as well this week. Kaboom, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And uh, and Canadian Destroyer. <laughs> Steve! <laughs> get in, mate. And I was like, why'd you ban it? Oh, Virgil did one. <laughs> he, just, he was the slowest, lowest impact <laughs> Canadian Destroyer. Trevor Murdoch nearly yeah. killed Matt Hardy doing it. Yeah. That was the dark days. Oh, we, it wasn't. It's just floppy whoppies. Like. <laughs> <laughs> the fact is, these men endure a tremendous amount of physical abuse in the ring. Over the years, they've suffered more bumps and bruises than they care to count. And finish of the exposed TV special. In the last five minutes, the wrestlers get over their injuries and how physically demanding pro wrestling is. And that's as I said. And then they undo it immediately with this carny supervillain promo. After watching this show, if you still got the guts to ask any pro wrestler, is it fake? Step into the ring and we'll show you how fake it is. <sighs> Ask me if it's fake, step into the ring, and I'll show you how fake it is. <laughs> Awful. Um, Pitbull Gary cuts a promo and says, I've heard six weeks <laughs> triple eight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just going to keep going. I've had 60 concussions in one year. I'm like, that's because you're a fucking knacker who <laughs> smashes and gets smashed over the head with full force chair shots in ECW like a big smelly carny. So, fuck off, man. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't go to the doctor 60 times to get checked no. in your bollocks, yeah, 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 yeah. I self-diagnosed 60 <laughs> times. <laughs> <laughs> hate wrestling sometimes. <laughs> I do love it, but I hate it. Curtain down. Exposing exposed, like it's quite antiquated. It was antiquated in the 90s, but was it acceptable in the 90s? Was it acceptable at the time? Doing PR for the special, Brash Knuckles said they were trying to show how much skill goes into presenting a wrestling match. Private Payne growled, I'm sick of people saying, oh yeah, that stuff's fake. Who cares? When was the last time you saw Bruce Willis go out and shoot a hundred terrorists? But he still makes very good movies. Which is a fair point. Yeah. Turns out that NBC approached All Pro Wrestling's owner, Roland Alexander, to use wrestlers in his promotion. They're actually used in Beyond the Mat as well. Private Payne here, Mike Modest, claims the original idea for the show was a wrestling show, but the contract read the premise of the show can change. So when it became a slam piece, pun intended, he tried to back out but was threatened with being sued, but got a bigger payday as compensation. How did the boys in the back react to this? They were impressed at his payout. <laughs> Only wrestling fans had a problem with exposing the business. Other wrestlers just saw, hey, payday, good stuff. Mm. So November 1998, wrestling is at its zenith. How did WWF and WCW react to it? So this special aired on November 1st, Sunday. The next night on Nitro, Ernest Miller came to the ring and bellowed out to the crowd, Now you know all our secrets! <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious, though, because actually later that night, Scott Steiner cut a shoot promo. <laughs> the yeah, the cheek of WCW to, be, <laughs> to feel anything about this, considering the shite that they did. Mm. And on Raw, Mankind told Al Snow... We didn't do so well last week, but last night, the secrets of pro wrestling were revealed to me. Well, just last night, Al, some of pro wrestling's greatest secrets were revealed to me, really? so I think everything's going to just stomp the foot. No! <laughs> Why are they promoting? Why are both companies promoting this shit Very show? Very strange. Mm. In a more official capacity, WWF also issued a press release after its airing, stating that NBC has hired a bunch of bitter, masked wannabe pro wrestlers that couldn't make the cut, and that the real secret to pro wrestling was that all of the WWF superstars sacrificed their body and soul to entertain the fans. All right, how did the wrestlers' careers that were inexposed go after this? Uh, nowhere. <laughs> uh, but, ooh, private pain. Mike Mollis, he did show up in WCW before it died. And, uh, of course, Slither, Chris Daniels. Yeah. Mm. Long and fruitful career with TNA and ROH. And a couple of paydays in WWE under a mask as well. Okay, I think it's fair to say that he he did the best out of everyone else. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sucks that he never got a proper run in WWE. Because yeah. he's super talented, super charismatic guy, you know. 
Creator Bruce Nash, what would he do? Never got his touring wrestling company. But he did make tons more TV features like World's Deadliest Volcanoes, World's Scariest Police Shootouts, World's Deadliest Sea Creatures, and, Trash. and yeah. World's Blankiest Blank. <laughs> <laughs> So, what did you think of Exposed, the pro wrestling's greatest secrets? I absolutely hated it. 20 years ago, I got something out of it. But now looking back, the patronising, condescending tone, it makes it worse. Salem saying these things. You fucking idiots. <laughs> and the silly, stupid selling, the overselling in the ring. I get what they, they had to do that for the cameras. Annoying people. Um... And just people. <laughs> people in general. People in general. Annoy me. Yeah. Oh, it was terrible. Terrible. So what do you think of Exposed? I'd rather watch a seven hour WrestleMania than watch this 40 minutes. Holy shit. Hold on, no hold way. On, Steve. No, 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 no. no way. I'd rather watch a seven hour WrestleMania in a horribly uncomfortable chair. No, no, no. Not, not live. <laughs> 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 no, you know, you know, I'll watch it from the comfort of my right. couch, you yeah. know. Um, yeah, I hated it. Like, even in 98, this can only have been stupid. It kind of says that it's going to shatter all these wrestling secrets and tell you the inner workings of it. It kind of does for a few things. But on other sides of it, the guys who make this are bigger marks than the biggest wrestling marks. And even though it was only 40-odd minutes, I couldn't make it through in one sitting. It took me like three goes be- wow. because I was like, it's so shit. Uh, like I was getting angry watching it. I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Do you think I'm stupid? <laughs> Don't even <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off, Salem. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's progressed Nine from on ten. foxes birds and now cats oh I've never liked cats you're gonna start drowning cats like dogs <laughs> dogs are great <laughs> uh, watch this back in 99 it was already decades out of date like they're explaining how things were in the 70s in the territories wrestling uh, hilarious embarrassing insulting condescending cringy but I darkly enjoyed it you know <laughs> it's like a child's crap drawing you know <laughs> Put it on the fridge. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, D minus, you know. Yeah, give it a watch, laugh at it, yeah. and, you know, that you'll be done with it. It's free on YouTube. Maybe it's better if you don't have to take notes on it. Though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I realised while watching this, like, us as wrestling fans, you know, we give out about everything, but we're very protective of wrestling. It's our business. It's our niche. Fuck outsiders. You know, wrestling, very incestuous business. Every time a celebrity shows up, they're booed out of the building. Seth Green, boo. Jeremy Piven, boo. You know, and Americans love celebrities, but American wrestling fans, wrestling fans, doesn't matter. Even to those who are wrestling fans, like Maria Menounos, massive wrestling fan, boo. Yeah. Stephen Amell, the guy from Arrow, campaigned for years trying to do anything with WWE. Yeah. Boo. Fuck you, you know. Any outsiders, fuck you. Except for Bob Barker. Yeah, who doesn't give a shit about it? Yeah. He's the only guy. And because he's old and cute. Shatner yeah. as well. <laughs> Shatner. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Betty White was. Uh, yeah. Like, all, like all old and cute. Oh, old people yeah, yeah, yeah. are grand, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're so weird as wrestling fans. <laughs> but it's like, it's our tribe, you know, our bubble, our niche, you know. So, uh, Bruce Nash, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that does it for this week, folks. Next up is Survivor Series 93. You got Keith, you got The Rocket, you got Bruce. <laughs> what did you think of our exposed review? Were you uh, thoroughly exposed? It's a fun, fun, no, slightly angry review. <laughs> <laughs> we got something out of it, at least. Um, so, you can watch all of our episodes. Fuck. Peter George and I'm Max Flavor at 43's full screen at awesomelyreview.com and if you're feeling jaunty you want to expose your gentlemanliness you can slip us a couple of bucks and watch some exclusive video reviews music and other good things happening at noggeru.owsbreview.com oh me meow and so it's a goodbye from V1 take a boo oh is he they do and myself Jay Hunter and remember a winner is you Meow, 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 me